If you have a job or you've been to a seminar or attended college, or maybe you were a sucker and went to a timeshare presentation because you wanted free Disney tickets, you've probably experienced this. A bad PowerPoint presentation. It's one of the least effective means of communication and oddly, one of the most popular. Quick, think of the most impactful, meaningful, inspirational PowerPoint you've ever seen. Can't do it, can you? But this video isn't about PowerPoint specifically. PowerPoint's just a metaphor. Simile, similitude, simile for as something. I say that because so many people communicate like a bad PowerPoint presentation even when they don't have an overhead projector. But here's the secret. PowerPoint presentations don't have to suck. By the way, I was inspired to make this video after seeing, of all things, a PowerPoint presentation. David J.P. Phillips is a public speaker who specializes in presentation skills. And I'm going to follow the format for his How to Avoid Death by PowerPoint to show how we could use it in our everyday lives. And on either side of a presentation or a discussion, there are plenty of notes to be taken. And I'll link his video in the description so you can check that out more. People with ADHD have a really bad working memory, but guess what? most neurotypical people also have a bad working memory. And I'd say in the last 10-15 years it's gotten even worse now that we're trusting our phones to remember everything for us. In his talk, Phillips went over five design principles that could optimize your PowerPoint presentations and I say they could optimize your everyday interactions as well. First principle, one message. With each PowerPoint slide you should communicate one idea, not two, not three. Phillips compares it to being at a party and trying to keep track of two conversations at the same time. If you have ADHD, counting what's in your head, that's three. If you have two points to make, don't make them at the same time because it's likely people will favor one or the other, not both, and you won't have any control over which one that is. It's even worse if you're making three points. If I were to say to you, we have to go to the store and buy apples, bananas, yogurt, and butter. When Aunt Beatrice wants the name of the kid that mows your lawn so she can hire him. Oh, and the check engine light in the car is on. I think that might have something to do with the oil gauge being low. Do you remember that grocery list? Okay, yeah, there's always one smart ass know-it-all, but for most people, especially over time, some some of that info is going to leak out of the brain. That's especially true if more conversation follows those three points. The best way to communicate multiple ideas is to present them separately, giving people enough time to process the information before moving on to the next. Phillips next references the, the redundancy, redundancy effect. effect. That's when identical information is given in two or more forms, making one of them redundant. An example would be somebody putting full sentences on a PowerPoint slide while simultaneously talking in full sentences. There's a notion in psychology called cognitive load theory, which has to do with our short-term memory versus our long-term memory. Short-term memory is limited, and it takes a little while for the brain to process new information into long-term memory. If you think of your brain as a computer, your short-term memory is the RAM, and the long-term memory is the hard drive. You could have a huge hard drive, but if you're rendering a 4K video while editing pictures and photograph and listening to your favorite tunes on lossless format, and you have five Word documents and 14 browser tabs open, and some of those are downloading some big files, your computer's gonna choke. Trust me, I know firsthand. For my computer, I just bumped the RAM up to 64 gigs. Can't do that with your brain, yet. So if you take in too much new information before your brain can process it into long-term memory, some of it's gonna get lost. Presenting that information in two formats simultaneously doubles the workload for the brain, even if you're narrating the exact text on the slide because the brain is constantly cross-checking. When explaining this notion, Phillips used this slide. Beautiful, isn't it? In the real world, you don't have written text presented along with your part of the conversation, but you can still apply this idea. Let's say you're explaining a new app to someone. Instead of talking while you're thumbing through all the buttons to show them how the app works, do it separately. Explain the next step. I'm gonna push the green button and you're gonna see this screen pop up. See that? Then they're not trying to follow along on the screen and listen to you at the same time. His next point references how we are visually drawn to big objects. Objects. Big could refer to the size of the text in your written word, or it could refer to the virtual size of your spoken word as you emote. See what I did there? Think of this as how it relates to your inflection, your expressions, and your hand gestures. Bond. James Bond. I am the one who knocks. Always be closing. He also talks about contrast. This is how you draw attention to where you intend it to be. It's why we use highlighters in textbooks. You can apply this to how you speak too, how you emote, your hand gestures, and your volume. In the video, Phillips makes a point of using black backgrounds on the slide so attention is on the speaker and not the screens. Because I am the presentation. That is my visual aid. Lastly, he talks about the number of objects you should use, which he says is six. If you follow the old phone company advice, it's seven. 
section. Of course, he's talking about the number of items on a PowerPoint slide, but this could apply to your emails or other forms of communication. I like to think of it like a restaurant menu. If you've got a good restaurant menu, the information is easy to process. Oh, look, snacks, tacos, dogs, burgers, ribs, greens. I'm gonna have some ribs. This menu? <laughs> I'm going to Arby's. The quick summary, one point at a time. Don't make redundant sources. Upsize the important stuff. Contrast is key and keep it simple with less. If I earned your subscription today, please hit that button and the bell and smash that like button. My kid also makes videos. I'll link her at the end. Thanks for watching. Stay out of the comfort zone. My sister and I are going to try Miracle Berry. It's a fruit that's supposed to make yucky food taste good.